If the previous decade has taught us anything, it's that even if the Vanguard phones are the ones that draw the headlines, they're not necessarily the best sellers. Most people will relate more to brands than capabilities, so on average, consumers just want a new Galaxy or iPhone for the least amount of money. It's the reason why we've seen companies drift to this new approach where you don't just get one Galaxy S or one iPhone. But in these challenging times, I'm sure many of you are asking yourselves, how do you draw the line? Which is the best bang for the buck affordable flagship that money can buy? And it's the reason why we've chosen today's comparison. This is the Galaxy S21, Samsung's least expensive flagship for 2021, and if you watched our recent review, one of the phones you should seriously consider right now. And then this is the iPhone 12, probably one of our favorite offerings in 2020 given how Apple has been able to blur the lines between flagship features and the price. I'm sure many of the fans are already drawing conclusions as to which one is the winner, but I'm gonna tell you that it's actually not that simple. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and this is our comparison sponsored by Subcase. Stick around to learn how you can win a Galaxy S21 and a Galaxy S21 Ultra. I think the debate between iOS and Android is so old and boring that I'm not going to waste your time on it. I'm not trying to convince you to join one or the other. On the contrary, this comparison is going to be more about which phone is the best bang for the buck, and it actually starts with the hardware. Physically, these two phones could not be more different. While Apple has decided to take a leap of faith in going entirely flat, Samsung has decided to only flatten the elements that are ergonomically convenient, which is smart given the differences in footprint. The Galaxy is five millimeters taller, slightly narrower, slightly thicker, and yet manages to pull it off with just a meager five extra grams in weight. Both are made of aluminum frames, with Samsung favoring a shiny side rail versus Apple's matte finish, but then both companies do the entire opposite at the back. As a result, the Galaxy handles fingerprints better, but I have the feeling that the polycarbonate back Samsung provides does some of the legwork. It is controversial to launch a flagship with polycarbonate, glastic, whatever you want to call it, but you also have to consider that the iPhone does not offer ceramic shield at the back, only at the front. Internally, things get tight as both devices are relatively just as modern with Qualcomm and Apple's five nanometer process. And sure, the Galaxy has double the RAM and almost double the battery, but we know that means nothing in the Apple world. What you should care about is that even if both devices don't offer expandable storage, the Galaxy starts at double. Then they both offer essentials like fast and wireless charging, but only the Galaxy can reverse it. They both are water resistant and offer the same ways to remain connected, even up to both flavors of 5G. Where Apple swings back is in offering the new ultra wideband feature on this iPhone, which the specific Galaxy S lacks. Now when it comes to the displays, this is where I'm more inclined towards Samsung. These are both OLED panels that support HDR10, with the S21 being only slightly larger as part of a trick since the iPhone is a tad wider. I'll praise both for their color reproduction and amounts of detail, even if the iPhone only has a slight lead in pixels per inch. Really, where the Galaxy wins is because it supports 120Hz refresh rate versus 60. There's almost no notch to deal with versus the worst in the industry, and because it has an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner under it, which is far more convenient during this pandemic. In a corner, and is now better protected by this. In other elements like the speakers, I'd call this more of a tie. Very evil in a corner, and is now better protected. Now, regardless of which device wins your hardware battle, that doesn't change the fact that both devices are fragile. Even with the polycarbonate back on the Galaxy S21, that doesn't change the fact that repairing the front is expensive, and then in the iPhone, it gets ridiculous, regardless of what you break. Get yourself a case, and this is where channel sponsor Subcase has you covered. Those of you looking for the full rugged experience, there's the award-winning UB Pro, made of a high-quality, hard polycarbonate and shock-absorbent TPU. You get all the texture and grip you need along with 20-foot drop resistance. I doubt you'll find the better quality solution that includes a kickstand and a belt holster at such a low price. Simply search S21 case by subcase on Amazon or go to subcase.com and use promo code POCKETNOW15 to get a 15% discount. Yes, we have partnered with Subcase to give away a Galaxy S21 and a Galaxy S21 Ultra, so follow the first link in the description and enter promo code POCKETNOWGALAXY. That'll enhance your chances to win. 
Now, as I began this video, once again, let me clarify, this is not a debate whether iOS is better than Android. I'm gonna tell you when it comes to both these phones where your money is gonna be better invested. iOS makes it really hard for any OEM to compete, unless they're Google, of course. And to put this into perspective, the six-year-old iPhone 6S is still supported by iOS 14, and you get your updates on day one, while Samsung only offers three years of support, is slow at them, and only gets slower the older your device gets. And then if this were the old grid of icons from Apple, I'd also give the visuals to Samsung, but even here, iOS 14 has finally evolved with widgets and a smarter app library versus Samsung's app tray. I just find Samsung's approach more dense, flexible, and useful. Now, even allowing the Google feed at the left of the launcher or the edge menus for essentials like multi-window support that iOS still cannot do. And I'm also more of a fan of Android 11 and how it stacks notifications and even offers access to home peripherals. Now, when it comes to the war of ecosystems, I'm actually going to call this a tie for the first time ever. I feel that Samsung has done an amazing job at catching up to Apple and offering devices that talk to each other and at the same time services that add value to buying this product. I would even say that the battle of battery life is also sort of a tie. I end the day just fine with either of these devices. I wouldn't call them two-day phones though. And it's the same experience for phone calls and even connectivity to 5G where I find both devices to perform pretty much the same. Really, the last element left to break this uh, sort of a minor subjective tie is the cameras. If you look at the spec sheet, you'd assume that this is an easy win for Samsung. I mean, you have a primary sensor that compares more with the iPhone 12 Pro Max, plus a telephoto that the iPhone 12 lacks, but I'll let the results do the talking. I'm gonna call this a tale of opposite approaches. During the day, the S21 tends to be warmer. The results vary based on your focal length, while the iPhone is cooler, and really not a phone I'd recommend for anything other than the ultra wide or the primary. I thought the 3X digital on the iPhone could compete, but who am I kidding? I also notice more of a natural bokeh coming from the S21 given the larger physics of the sensor and also a tad more detail. Once you turn off the lights, I don't recommend you use any other focal length as the ultra wide is kind of washed on both devices and the telephoto in these conditions is actually just a digital crop. It's actually not real. I drift more to the Galaxy because the iPhone continues to be plagued with light reflections that Samsung barely has to deal with. And then things flip over literally with selfies where Apple gets warmer than Samsung. And sure, Apple's deep fusion makes me look younger and handle skin tones really well, but I find Samsung to be more accurate and it also offers less of a crop in selfie portraits. So far, I can tell you, I think that photography belongs to Samsung, but then video is where the iPhone continues to reign supreme. Sure, Samsung has done a far better job in avoiding warping as you walk, but then sharpening is still there, even if in less of a degree. And sure, you get elements like 8K and director's view, things that I still consider gimmicks right now. And the same goes for selfie video. I actually don't find either phone to do better with dynamic range or the crop. I still just find Apple to execute better. It is a close call, but if I had to pick in the video department alone, I'd go iPhone. But then the rest of the camera comparison belongs to the Galaxy. To conclude, no worries, you know me. I will call out a winner, but you can't deny that this has been a very interesting tie in certain elements. Samsung wins the hardware, software drifts more to iOS, though it's a matter of taste where I prefer the Galaxy, but then the camera really depends on what you care about most, be that photos or video where I think the Galaxy is the better buy. And then guys, once you jump into the price, Samsung wins. It's a few dollars less expensive if you ignore the odd carrier discounts from Apple that I, I don't know, those are weird. But then you get double the most things that matter internally, you get more cameras, and if you were to take advantage of the pre-order deals, the Galaxy S21 gives you enough perks to buy back the charger and the pair of earbuds that are not available on either box. I'll be sure to link to those deals in the description in addition to other options that I recommend for fast chargers. Bottom line, the Samsung Galaxy S21 wins. If you're in the market for the best bang for the buck, affordable flagship that money can buy, it doesn't get better than this right now. 
And I even hate to pull on Apple's old slogan, but seriously, the Samsung Galaxy S21 is the right amount of everything. And sometimes double that, and then some. Let us know if you agree with our comparison in the comments down below. And while you're at it, follow us on social media. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow me on my personal handles to help you choose the right affordable flagship for the money right now. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.